the Garden of Eden. Didn't we fall from eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? And are we still in the garden? Well, good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Chase Corrington, and if you're new here, this is the Chase Corrington YouTube channel where we seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment, where we seek to discover the hidden mysteries of our reality and the hidden wisdom of the ages. So this video today, ladies and gentlemen, is a response to a comment I got from a viewer on my video, my last motivational Monday morning, which I do every Monday. And the comment was very interesting. Actually, there's a couple comments and I appreciate all the comments I get. So anyways, context is key because I can't pretend to know, you know, where people's beliefs lie, where our point of view is, or what our current point of view is on the situation. And so, con you know, knowing where somebody is coming from gives us the best opportunity to relate and try to compare information and answer questions that way. So context is key, and I can't pretend to know where beliefs lie or knowing lies or whatever you want to call it. But the, there's many people with many different viewpoints, ladies and gentlemen, on this subject, and it's a touchy one. So what I'll do here is share my opinion, and hopefully that will help you, that will aid in your own personal discovery. And so most of my videos at this point get around 20 views or so, you know, some 15, some 20. There's a couple up 60 and one of them is doing really well, which is odd. I, it's um, reading analytics is very interesting. But anyways, what I'm saying is that each and every one of you with this small, you know, of uh, impact, it's extremely important to me, each and every one of you that watches my videos. So each and every one of you is very important to me and I really appreciate all of my subscribers and those of you who comment and like. So thank you very, very much for everybody that engages and spends time to listen to me just talk <laughs> and share my opinions, my thoughts, and my feelings on interesting topics but so let's get into it now the question on my last video ladies and gentlemen came from smudger so thank you smudger for your question i really appreciate it and your interest in this topic because it's one that needs to be discussed ladies and gentlemen so the question was didn't we fall because the video i did was the power of knowledge. And so the question was, didn't we fall from eating of knowledge? And so immediately I think, fall from what? Into what? Didn't, you know, are you asking, didn't we fall from, and this could apply to anybody asking this kind of question, didn't we fall from grace into sin or didn't we fall from divinity into, see, this is where sin comes in. And it's my humble opinion that sin is a trick. It's a trap. It's not a real thing. It's something to give you fear, give you guilt, and to allow somebody to control you. Because if you have this thought of sin, you know, did we fall from if we ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Did we fall from goodness into badness? You know, light into dark? Um, whatever it is, this duality idea of good and bad in that you know, everything is not dependent on each other. That's what this duality separation does to us. It, 
anyways, didn't we fall from eating of knowledge? And so immediately I'm thinking, fall from what? Into what? It's like, in my humble opinion, I don't think sin exists. And so my answer was, it depends what we choose to accept, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the key to this kind of stuff. It depends what your perception is, and everybody's perception is entirely different. But I personally don't think we ever fell from anything into anything else. Our original nature, I'll just say what my answer was here. It depends what we choose to accept. I personally don't think we ever fell, nor can we. We just got tricked into physical existence, but still hold our original divine nature. And so that's a deep study. And it, it took me a long time to get to that point of view. But that's another day. Now, the key thing there is we still hold our original divine nature. So if we fell from anything, whatever we originally were is still there. And I don't personally think we fell. I think we got tricked into the physical form, the 3D physical construct, and our, our true, you know, higher dimensional or our true higher selves or our spirit or this divine nature that they want us to believe we fell from and lost, that is still there. And it's still there, just we just need to break out of this and get to it. And that's something, once you really get that, that we are not these bodies, that's something that brings great peace. The fear of death loses its grip. And so after my answer, then Smudger, thank you again, appreciate it, asked, but are we still in the garden? And this is powerful. Are we still in the garden, ladies and gentlemen? Because that's a great question. Let's look at what the garden is, and it may help us to answer this. And so let's see if I can share the screen here. Share. Let's go with that one. Share. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you're seeing that, and hopefully we got good internet at this time. <laughs> but so this is, I wanted to start right here, because I think this is very, very interesting. So y Yahweh made an enclosure. So what is a garden? ladies and gentlemen. And before we get to what a garden is, real quick, check this out. So Genesis 2, 4, this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made them. And be very careful with the Lord because, you know, they, they um, push it off here in the modern versions of the Bible as the Lord and God are the same person. And that's a common misinterpretation, common misunderstanding that the Lord, Yahweh, is a totally different person than the true divine, you know, creator Elohim or divine essence or whatever you believe God really is. But hopefully you understand that the Lord and God are two different things. Now, what I wanted to show here is so powerful. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made them. So this shows right here, and then right after it in five, it says, Now no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth. When just before this, just before this, everything was made, you know, God saw that it was good rested on the seventh day 
And it's like, so what happened to this good creation? And now this is a new account that the Lord made. So in my humble opinion, what happened is the true um, benevolent Elohim created this divine place for spiritual beings, which we are, and were not physical at the time. And then later, another Elohim, which is not benevolent, but malevolent, <laughs> came in, um, calls himself Yahweh, or, you know, whatever you know him as, the Lord, shows up. And now this is his account after he destroyed the previous creation, trapped, and you go to the garden story, or, you know, trapped, not the garden story, the creation story, trapped us in these physical, um, some people call them mud hut bodies made from the dust of the earth. So he conned us as spiritual beings into this dust that he created you know, into this physical 3D trap. And I mean, there had to have been a good deal. It had to, there had to have been a reason. I'm no Bible scholar here, so I'm sure some of you may have a better understanding of this than I do, but there had to be, a, you know, something that allowed us to be easily conned into this physical construct. And then later we realized the mistake. But so anyways, I thought that was important to show here that this Genesis 2-4, you know, starts the new account of the physical construct that the Lord or Yahweh, the malevolent Elohim, is in control of. And so now let's see if we can go to Genesis 3. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And so it's important to understand that what the garden is. So right here, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals. Crafty actually in the original Hebrew can translate to sensible. I say can translate because you can, you know, there's a few things it can translate to, but sensible is one of them. So they try to make it sound evil. And I'm not saying whether or not the serpent was evil or wasn't. I'm just saying the words mean different things here. And that's what we're looking at in the garden. Genesis 3, 8. And so Genesis 3, 8, Yahweh made an enclosure. And this is going to show it even more. I hope this will go fast. So we can, but then the man and his wife heard the voice, the breeze, garden, they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Where are you? Hmm. Interesting, ladies and gentlemen. This is not where I expected to be. Let's go to the interlinear, because this is how we really learn. And we'll do this together. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So right here, see how it separates Elohim and Yahweh? So it's like... Yahweh is one of the Elohim, but he is not representative of all of them. He is separate as an individual. So, or I keep saying he, but forget the um, masculine feminine thing. So anyways, Adam, wife of the garden. Let's click on of the garden and see exactly what this means because this is why we're here. And if you're still here, thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate everybody that does watch. Smudger, particularly this is answering your question 
Are we still in the garden? Well, if this is Yahweh's 3D creation that we're trapped in, and a garden here, as we can see, before it means garden, this word G-A-N, before it means garden, the first thing it means is an enclosure. An enclosure, ladies and gentlemen. So Yahweh made an enclosure. And an enclosure is meant to keep something in. So are we still in the garden? Ladies and gentlemen, is the entire planet the garden? And was it another misinterpretation that the garden was a, you know, just a small place in Eden? Or is it this entire 3D construct that is the enclosure? So... Are we still in the garden? That's an incredible question. And it's very important, you know, that th this is open to interpretation. So you could say the earth in this 3D reality, ladies and gentlemen, is the enclosure. And in that case, we may still be in the garden. So I guess the answer to this mystery is open to interpretation. It's open to perception. And continue to do research. And use Bible Hub in that way. Go to the interlinear on the areas that you're confused about, struggling with, and click on the number on the top of the word like I did there, and it'll take you into the Strong's Concordance and the original meanings of these words. And a lot of them have multiple meanings. That one's garden and enclosure. And those are very different things. Garden and enclosure. <laughs> so, however, here at the end, I would say it is important to continue to ask questions, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly, question those answers. Ask questions and question answers because that's how we'll truly find knowledge. And being able to have these discussions openly, I was just thinking while I was driving earlier, why can't we talk about politics? Why can't we talk about religion with each other? Because people feel very strongly. Oh, so? So what's bad about that? Well, people end up fighting each other. Why? Why do people end up fighting each other over things we feel strongly against? even though we differ because somebody told us to like, th think about it. If we could have these conversations about the things that we feel differently against, we'll start learning at an incredible pace. They won't be able to stop our understanding. Um, I seen a meme earlier. It was like uh, about politics, left or right. You know, the left hates the right and the right hates the left. And whatever happened to people who um, argued to find the common ground or people who, you know, uh, came from both sides and didn't hate each other and tried to use both of their views and find common ground to fix the problems we're dealing with. And, you know, this is the theme in the episode of The Dark Crystal I was watching last night incredible show if you haven't seen the new dark crystal ladies and gentlemen that is pure disclosure on whew, just pure disclosure i'll say that and so i'll leave it at that ladies and gentlemen and smudger thank you for your comment and i appreciate the other comments on that video those were powerful as well uh, both of the that conversation, the engagement, this community creation, talking to each other, this is the most important thing in life, ladies and gentlemen. That and seeking to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment. 
also understanding that happiness is not something we get from the world, but we bring to the world through this understanding, this greater understanding of the hidden wisdom of the ages and understanding the secrets of our reality. If you get value from this content, consider subscribing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs down. But in the end, ladies and gentlemen, we will win if you make your voice heard. Until then, we'll be back in the future with more interesting topics to throw your way. And we'll be back with another Motivational Monday. Thank you.